Hey everybody, Adam with Fanic here. And uh, if you are tuning in and you are seeing a robot in this position, uh, hopefully you are cringing in your seats. Uh, this robot is the visual representation of nails on a chalkboard to a robot programmer. And that's because it is trying to pick up a part uh, very near or in singularity. And uh, anyone who uh, has been around robots long enough has been bitten by this. So we're going to take uh, a little dive um, into talking about what singularity is uh, and how to avoid it. So let me get this robot into a uh, little more happy position here. Let's take it to a home position. So here's my LR mate. And if you look at the J4, J5, and J6 interaction, uh, this is a happy robot. And to quantify how happy it is, I'm going to show you J5 is currently at negative 90 degrees. So that, uh, that number is going to become very important as we keep talking. By definition, or at least by my definition, maybe not textbook, but I'm darn close. The definition of singularity is when the robot has an infinite number of kinematic uh, possibilities to reach the same end position. Okay, an infinite number of ways to get to the same spot. You can see that as I bring J5 closer and closer and closer to the zero position, this robot's already mad at me. I'm already, things are turning yellow and orange and blinking and getting mad. I can make it green and happy again by getting J5 away from zero. But as I get J5 up toward that zero position and everything gets mad, let's talk about what that infinite number of solutions really means. What that means is your robot is trying to get six axes uh, in serial, right? They're, they're not parallel linkage. It's, it's, you know, they are dependent on one another. Nothing is independent. It's not like a CNC uh, mill machine. So it's trying to get six axes all to work together and drive together to get that TCP, your tool center point, uh, it's trying to get that TCP to a position in space. If I have singularity, I could take J6, for example, turn it, let's say, 90 degrees, but then I could come over here and counter-rotate J4, negative 90 degrees, and look it. My tool is exactly how it started. Suction cups are in the same orientation, TCP is in the same spot, but I have J4 at a neg 90 and J6 at a 90. And as you can imagine, you know, if I went 138 there and negative 138 there, right, I'm, I'm close. Uh, I'm maintaining that tool's position in space while jacking the robot all up. And because this is a circle, uh, there are an infinite number of ways that you can screw with the combinations of J4 and J6 and still say the same. When a robot's kinetic algorithm is trying to take you somewhere, it is trying to solve a complex equation of where to put all your axes to get your tool where you need it to be. That's the black box magic that we don't have to write. We drag this robot somewhere and say, record, and we just take for granted that it gets there. But if there are an infinite number of solutions to get there, uh, it doesn't know which one to take, you find singularity, and the robot faults out. Now, a couple asterisks before we go into where it, I'm going to talk about where you find it and where you fix it. Asterisk number one, you can only get singularity if you have a six axis or more robot, you know, FANUC makes a seven axis and you know, blah, blah, blah. But um, you need a minimum of six axes because again, J4 and J6 get in a fight because of J5 keeping them aligned. If you have a 
four-axis robot, like a Fanuc Palletizer, the M410s, there is no such thing as singularity. Cannot happen, because any place you want to go, there are no two axes fighting each other, uh, so therefore every place that you can go has one solution. Same with a five-axis robot, like our LRMate 7H, or the M710-50H, or the 410-140H. Anything that Fanuc has with an H at the end uh, is our uh, high inertia, is what they, what they call it, H. But um, those are the five-axis robots. Singularity doth not exist there. So that's asterisk number one, is you've got to have a six-axis robot to have this problem. Uh, Scares and deltas are also impervious. Not going to happen. Asterisk number two is Fanuc has a really cool tool called Singularity Avoidance. Uh, you can buy it outright, or you can buy it as part of the motion package. But what Singularity Avoidance does is it gives some built-in intelligence to the robot that the robot says, I am going to force the hand of my J4 if I'm heading, I'm going to say screen left. If it knows, it's going to use look ahead and, and it's going to be blending moves. It's going to say, hey, if we're going to the left, I'm going to make sure that this thing goes left and I will counter rotate my J6 to fix it. And if we're going to go to the right of the screen, it'll do the other, you know, the inverse and it's going to force the hand to sort of make there only be one solution. Even though there's infinite, it's going to make there be only one. Um, what that does to you in your code is it slows the robot down. You will physically see J4 do some wonky things, and it'll wind up really fast. You've probably seen it before. Uh, if you've got cable management going to your tool, it's going to stretch and twist your cables. Um, it's not pretty. But <laughs> it keeps your robot from faulting out and locking up and, and ruining your code. So those are the two things to keep in mind. Um, Six-axis robots, and please do use singularity avoidance. It helps. Now, where does this occur in nature? This occurs in nature when people start placing the robot on right angles to things and having the pick position down low near where the robot has to reach at its base. So, for example, these suction cups need to pick up this block. If I try to go here, uh, the first thing you'll see, actually, let me see if I can get my hand on the orb here and get that aligned a little better. The first thing you'll see, all right, I'm trying to pick up my deck of cards. Look at my J5. J5 is four degrees away from death, all right? Uh, this robot would go down and pick this part, but if I had to go, you know, a little bit back or a little bit forward, oh, you can already see. Look at the screen. See the red orb? That is a no-go zone. I cannot pick up the part there. Uh, I can go out here, but look at singularity comes in and kicks my butt right there. So this does occur in nature, right? Someone mounts a robot there, says, hey, pick up the part from the conveyor and drop it in the tote. No big deal. And then you're dead. So... We know that it happens, we know that it's easy to happen, and there are infinite number of places where singularity can occur, because uh, anytime J5 is zero, I can have singularity. So I could be reaching into a machine and have singularity. It could be reaching up above me and have singularity, behind me and have singularity. I can articulate J1, 2, and 3 anywhere I want in the workspace of the robot and have this problem. So there's an infinite number of ways that this can become a bad day. Okay. Um, but the point being, it happens more than you'd expect. So let's fix it. Okay. Here we go. Let's, let's start talking about how to fix it. One thing that you can do, and, and I guess let me, let me back this up. If you are the programmer you are safe in this, in this scenario. Uh, there is nothing you can do to program around this. If the robot is bolted here, the table's bolted here, and you need to pick up a part there, you're going to fault out the robot. So programmers, you're safe. But guess what? You're going to call up your mechanical engineer, 
and say, hey, old buddy, old pal, uh, you need to redesign some of this. So Emmys, hopefully you're tuning in here. Um, we're going to make fun of you today. Uh, one possible solution is to physically relocate the robot. And there are some easy ways to do that. One is I could lower the robot. Just by lowering the robot, I've all automatically changed the articulation of how it's going to get to the part. You can see I have a nice bend between J4 and J5. In fact, I have a 27 degree bend. That robot is happy and it'll rock and roll and it'll go there and there and everywhere. Maybe a little singularity if you had to get way back in the corner, but you know what? 14 degrees is fine. So the first and easiest thing you could do is lower the robot relative to the picking surface. Let's say that's not an option. Uh, cannot move the robot down. Okay. Could we change the conveyor? If you could raise the conveyor, that would also be the same effect. Um, so robot or pick place locations can change. Let's say both of those are fixed. Adam, I can't move the robot, I can't move the machine, I can't move the conveyors, what else can I do? Well, here's where we start getting into some other cool little tricks. Let me bring this robot back up to a home position a second. One thing we can experiment with is moving the tooling. I can, let's start with the translation first. This is not ideal, but it works. Let's take my tool and let's mount it off to the side. So maybe what this robot has is it has a little bracket, just a little six inch long piece of steel that puts the tool over here. Well, let me go ahead and update my U-Tool. U-Tool, user frame, TCP, pick your favorite slang. But either way, I gotta reteach that. Okay, that looks good. You can see that I now have a uh, three inch, right? 78 millimeter ish offset of where my tool is. Don't mind this, this ghost. This is a before and an after image. Um, so now as I move the robot around, you can see my tool is offset. Well, now as I go to pick up a part, if I may, let's see here. You can see that, uh, and maybe where things are set up, I haven't solved this. Maybe I'll go the other direction. Let's offset it the other direction. And see, Emmys have the hardest job. Don't let them tell you otherwise. Let's offset the tool to the other side. To the other side. There we go. Now, as I need to go pick up this part, you can see what happens. Offsetting the tool to get the tool to the part has pushed the robot to the right of the screen. And in doing so, in forcing the robot to be farther away from the part, I've induced a nice little angle. In fact, I've induced a 15 degree angle where I used to have only about a four degree angle just by an imaginary bracket that offsets the tool. This is very popular in palletizing with six axis robots because it also allows you the, the ability to gain some reach. Think about this. Your J6 can now swing out here or swing back here. So now I've gained six inches of where I can reach with that robot. So for a six axis palletizer, uh, an offset tool is great. It gives you more reach. It allows you to manipulate that the wrist is offset from the tool when you're picking and placing. Cool, that is one solution. Let me show you another one that's maybe even a little bit better, arguably, uh, maybe one of my favorites. Let's edit this tool again. Um, let me put it back to where it was first. Let's get a little baseline here, get it centered back up. What if I took this tool and I just put a little bit of a angle on it? Let's call it a 30 degree angle. So now maybe what your ME has done, you can see the before and the after here, the ghost image and the new image. Maybe they took a little wedge block, a little piece of aluminum, a little piece of steel, nice little 30 degree wedge block and put that in. 
Well, let me go ahead and update my user frame, user tool. I know that there's a 30 degree uh, angle on it, but let's also get it lined up with the suction cups of the black ones on the screen. Apply. So now I have a new tool center point and that tool center point is on the same angle that the tool is on. Well, check this out. Now I want to go pick up my part. Look at this. Look how beautiful that is. The tool is perfectly parallel. I guess perpendicular to the part, but cups are parallel. It is perfectly aligned with the part. But look at my J5, the J4, J5 interaction. No surprise. It's 30 degrees better than the four degrees we used to have, right? So we used to be flirting with singularity. We were four degrees away from death. Now we're 34 degrees away. We're, we're oceans away. We've got a happy robot that's got a nice bend with only one possible kinematic solution to get six axes to get that robot to pick up that part. So an angle tool can really help. Guess what else could help? If we take this thing back, let's take it back home. Let's reset things back to the danger zone. Zero, zero, I think I was around 58, zero. Let's apply that. Let's get things back to the danger zone. Okay, so there's my tool again. One other thing we could do is tilt the robot. Tilt the whole base of your robot. In fact, let's put it at a good number, 30. Now the robot is on a wedge block. But when I go and pick up my part, look what happens. I have a beautiful J4, J5 interaction with a nice bend right here uh, of how to get the part. And the way you would overcome this in, in real life is once you have the robot on a 30 degree angle, just make sure you teach a user frame on the table and your user frame will have a negative 30 in the user frame because horizontal would be 30 degrees away from ro robot world. And now the robot would still jog perfectly level with your uh, picking surface. So the moral of the story here is mechanical solution this is not the programmer's job to fix but it could be the programmer's job to plan okay if you are designing this and you are the programmer or you're the emmy you should be laying this stuff out in solidworks inventor pro e autocad pick your favorite or if you're uh, a super stud throw it in robo guide put it in here and, and start moving things around, test your positions, test your code, see where singularity could exist, and design around it up front before the material is purchased and cut and bolted together and you have problems. Plan ahead. And if you didn't plan ahead, probably the quickest and easiest thing you can do is put a wedge block in your tool and then update your U tool and everything will be happy. So hopefully this helps, guys, gives you some guidance, some direction, some stuff to think on. Uh, you know, if you've got any questions or comments, you know what to do. Put them below. Let's start a, start a conversation about it. Um, talk to your local FANUC rep and your local FANUC engineers. We are always happy to help. And uh, as you avoid singularity, have fun coding.